Hey, welcome Petri Karjalainen. Fantastic to have you here. Hi, Markus. Great to speak to you again. Yeah. We haven't been in touch for a couple of weeks now. Even. No, no, it's true. And uh, you know, Petri and I, we worked together recently in a customer strategy project for Petri's organization. And, and it was a quite, it was so fun and quite, quite uh, nice. Petri is, is heading a, 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 a unit in the, in the, or was heading a unit in the, in, in the accounting service provider field. They are the big market leader here. And now he changed work. So Petri, how about Tell me, tell a little bit the people here that what are, what have you been doing? What is your backstory? Yeah, yeah. Right now I work as a strategy director, actually the chief strategy officer for Accounter Group, which provides software and accounting services to, to SME customers. So, so that is we have something like over hundred thousand companies as our customers. Yeah. But Anything we do, we actually always think the customer first. It, it's part of, part of our values, and it also means that, 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 that the SME customers are really important for us. Yeah. So uh, when we did the customer strategy, I mean, a customer strategy is really a sub-strategy of the whole business strategy. So can you explain what is what is the customer strategy for you? Yeah, custom, customer strategy, of course, you know, that there are other strategies or other subsets also already in place in that organization where we work together. So, so we felt that we need to improve particularly the understanding of, of the customers within the, the whole organization. Uh, we are operating on, on over 20 different sites. Uh, geographically, there is a distance almost 1,000 kilometers between the, the southwest office to the northwest office. So, uh, what we needed to do was to align the, the customer segmentation thinking in the organization, uh, and then also what is the value proposition that, that we have, and then to document that uh, to, 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 to understandable one page, which we can then take into strategy implementation and execution. Yeah, so, uh, uh, and, and how big was your management team? <laughs> ah, yes, the management team also, eight people were, were involved more or less in, in this, but we, it's, it's not really, you know, in many companies where I have worked, the, the, the strategy has been uh, developed by the management team, and then we usually have faced tremendous difficulties in implementing the strategy. Implementing because uh, that means that uh, uh, we then need to communicate and align. So, so yeah. in this case, I wanted to do something differently and involve people from the, the, the north office to the southwest office into the process itself to make the implementation much more smooth. No, okay, but that was very exciting. So, how how did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we 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 were lucky to select you who were already at that stage uh, providing the service over modern tools, actually two video conferencing, which we are also using in this call, which enabled us to take over 100 persons into, into the widest call that, that we had. Uh, but usually we, we, we worked as a management team also, that is, is spread across the, the different sites. So, so we used uh, video conferencing to develop the strategy and then also the workshops together with the organization. So we, we invited basically all the key stakeholders to review the, the strategy on, on regular intervals and then give their feedback. We also use the, the other tools to document that and facilitate uh, the discussion in small groups using the, the, the electronic tools. So what did they say? How did they feel about it? <laughs> that, that, that was really interesting because they, they felt that in the past they have not been heard of. You know, they, they, they had so many things to be said. Uh, but now when they, they finally were involved, involved into the strategy process on a level where they would be able to, to directly speak with the leadership team uh, members as well as, as also so between themselves, they felt quite empowered in, in that sense. And now the implementation when it's taking place is much more easier because so many persons over 10% of the total organization was involved already to develop the strategy. Those are the skills and competencies about what we want to accomplish with the customer strategy is well understood in the organization. Yeah. Every slide has a couple of persons who are competent to, 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 to explain quite detailed level the, 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 uh, 
vision that we have and then also to the milestones that we create. Tell me a little bit about, you said that all the key players, but what kind of people did, did join the process? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we involved the team leaders, I mean accounting team leaders on different sides, we involved the sales, the customer service, marketing people uh, and so on so so anyone who is dealing with customers more or less uh, of course we, we we couldn't involve every individual i mean every individual accountant but, but still no. uh, quite a big part of the organization was was uh, involved in the process yeah and, and and it's interesting that that they were having this big big meetings in in the in video meetings with Zoom also during the process and then the people got the task that go out and tell your team about the process. So they, they were also involved indirectly that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean quite many video conferencing systems have certain uh, limitations uh, that, that it doesn't allow enough people to call, be called in to, or alternatively you know require so much bandwidth or, or so that, that there has been technical difficulties to involve yeah. people. Yeah. Uh, to same degree, but this technology allowed us even to, to split the hundred persons into the two person teams to discuss about certain topics during the, the, the session. So, so that was really also something very new yeah. and modern. So, so the, the organization yeah. gave us quite good feedback about the, 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 the technology also we used in here and I started to use, by the way, they, they ordered the licenses to certain tools and are now using it. Yeah, that's very nice. I love that one. Hey, Petri, uh, uh, let's also a little bit split, uh, elaborate the, the customer strategy. Uh, what is your comment uh, comment about the segmentation part? What did you learn and what did you experience? Yeah, uh, quite often in the companies where I have worked, the, the segmentation has been based on on, on products or, or in a, in a way. The, the offering that the company is, 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 is offering. Here we wanted to do something differently and, and focused on the needs, customer needs. Yeah. And created uh, a customer segmentation model which is based on the customer need actually. And then, then of course uh, we, we needed to have another axle there which is, is the customer value to, to us as a company so that we can have it as a two-dimensional. Yeah map of, of, of different customer segments and that the need-based strategy even though it would sound easy to implement but still to get aligned uh, that, that what are the basic customer needs that, that make a customer yeah. that was a lengthy discussion from, from our it point. It was a lengthy discussion and I, um, uh, uh, what do you remember uh, how many versions of the segmentation model did we do before we were ready just about and how many how many different meetings did we discuss that in yeah that, that, that was <laughs> I, I would say almost like countless versions because you know we, we changed during the meeting all the time uh, the, the version and, and then we came back and it, it was an I think even versions doesn't describe because it was an iterative process where we sometimes needed to take uh, some step back and, and then restart and then start working again. But in overall, the whole process took us. Uh, there was a new year and Christmas in between, so I, I think effectively we are talking about two months' time. Yeah, uh, only two months, yeah. And it's quite fast. I mean, you, you have a big organization anyway. But the whole point is that the big org organization cost of small teams. That, yes. And, yes. And, and we, were really working, we were really working in small teams all the time. So for a leader who uh, leads a twenty-person company, so it's it's almost the same. You have to. Uh, it, it is from 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 our perspective, yeah. the accounting. The, the the history of our company is, is that there has been quite many uh, many activities where we have bought accounting companies. So, so, so basically, you could say that that almost every site is a company that we have bought. So there are cultural differences also. So, so each of yeah. these a the small company selling the services also to SME sector. So yeah, you, know. so you are very familiar with, with that. Okay, that was the segmentation part and thank you for those comments. And now let's talk about the two other parts of the customer strategy. That is the offer and the service model. So let's start, let's take the service model first. First, yeah. Because the offer is the most tricky one, I, I think. So, so how about the service model? What did we learn? 
the, the service model is an, is an interesting one because, of course, ev every customer segment re requires a certain uh, different set of services. Or, yeah. And then also that is based on the, the, the cost involved because, you know, we cannot provide the same level of, of service to, to, to someone who is a very large customer compared to, 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 to very small customers. So we needed yeah. to create also basically different service model for, for different customer. Uh, not really the segments, but at least customer classes. So, so that was the mm -hmm. first learning in there. And then, then we discussed quite a lot about also the different roles uh, that, that implementing that service model needs and, and, and also that uh, who are responsible for the, at the end for the customer. So, so defining also that was important in, in our conversation. Yeah. So the service model kind of in practice implements the customer segmentation and classification yeah. because that's how we at the end operate. Of course, you know, marketing can use the segmentation model or, or, or customer customer classes that, that we also so call them sometimes uh, for marketing purposes, but really to, 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 to be able to operate with the customers the yeah. way that the customer strategy defines yeah. we, to implement the service models. So when Petri says customer classes, he means the value for the company that we use the gold, silver, bronze. So that, that's a kind of classes. And then the segments are the need inside. So, so I remember that the bronze level, we had three different segments on the bronze level, but then one on the silver and one in the gold. Yeah, yeah. And, and then even the iron level, I think we... we yeah, then the, the, the iron level. <laughs> Now, now we have came to realize that, that it's not single iron level after the work that, that, that we did. Okay. It's actually two iron level uh, customer segments that we have. There. Yeah. But hey, if I said the word red flag, what does, how does that sound in, in between for you? <laughs> what was the red flag? I think it was so interesting because there is always work to, to be done with the service model. But comment that, Petri, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course, you know, when you start, to work on the strategy and, 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 and you know that there is area for improvement but when you go into the discussion everything seems to be first extremely well but when you dig into the details like we did during the process then you come to realize that it's not really okay many of the things so 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 whenever we encountered an area of the customer service model uh, which we were not ready yet we, we used the red flag there to document it and, and, and park it so that we would then remember later on also to create an action uh, to, to, to mitigate yeah. that risk that the red flag created to us. Yeah, so there was, uh, in, a, in one service model, there was many, many different actions, but certain actions we, we marked with the red flag that this has to be improved and we saw the potential of improving that part. Yeah, service so, well, I think is never ready. You have to always make it better and better and better. Okay, that was the service model. Thank you for those comments. And now about the offer. And I must say that when I started to work with you and I saw all the nitty gritty, because you have hundreds and hundreds of things that you offer the customers, I almost it blew my mind. And then we started to see that how does this offer suit the segments and how could you comment that bit? <laughs> yeah, that, that was an interesting exercise because you know of course it's easy to in a way document what we have today to, to yeah. the customers but then when you start to look into that and fit that into the customer segmentation you come to realize that actually there is a need for to change and additionally uh, we are in a, currently in a in a phase as a company where we actually are launching new services to the market. So, so from our perspective, the, the, the kind of offering that we have today is, is currently uh, evolving. And, and now the, the customer service model and particularly the customer segmentation, we are using company-wide within our organization in the whole group, not only in the accounting business, to kind of define uh, what kind of, of features and, and how, what are the products that we are offering to different segments. So, so yeah. even though we started to, with, with one unit, one, one country, uh, it has become a topic uh, uh, within the whole group and, and we 
during the process involved, of course, not only the organization which we were working with, but also all the, the kind of relevant discussion parties within elsewhere in the organization. And uh, that way they get to know what we are doing and, and, and they were injected in a way a seed uh, that, 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 that this could be something that they implement. And it has started now to live uh, okay. in the company. Yeah, they did a sneak peek in the process and when we did it as a video conference so they could easily join and, and, and see what is happening. And, and that was quite interesting. Hey, uh, uh, a few words about implementation, Petri. You have this 4DX model. Could you tell a little bit what, what is it all about? Yeah, no, normally companies talk about uh, must-win battles in a way. We have then implemented the, the uh, 4DX model within our company. But I think it's, it's more uh, common to speak about must-win battles. So basically no. what we created there was a, was a, a framework uh, where we kind of categorized under four top headings certain uh, activities, certain in a way must win battles that we need to to to, to uh, make sure that those gets executed. Two or three of, of all of these these four. Right? So I think it was at the end ten uh, must win battles that we need to win to implement this. Yeah. So Petri is now talking about the, the strategy one pager which we also yes. produced. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, in the strategy one one page, it was not only vision, but it was a concrete plan uh, that then got uh, nominated to each of these activities, got nominated to respective uh, leadership team member uh, who has now that that uh, as the personal target for this year. And we also created the preliminary timeline for each of the individuals yeah. and what made that that particular must-win battle needs to be uh, completed. Yeah, and, and what was, I also think, a very unique feature in, in your process is that you were only your interim leader for yeah. the organization, and then you took on board the next leader, and he yeah. worked one month with you together. But how did that transfer of leadership work here in the process? Because that is a situation in many organizations. I think it was fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that of, of course, in quite seldom you're in a, in a position where you can actually work together for a month uh, just to do the skills transfer and, and the handover and so on. So, so, so that was unique even, even for me. Usually it's the manager who is, is helping you to get onboarded. And, then, yeah. then, and of course the time is, is limited. But together with, with my follow what we were doing there, uh, we were you know, sitting in the same meetings and discussing constantly for, my, for the full yeah. month. And then now he's responsible for, for as he said, in, 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 in four months I created more work for him that he is able to implement in two years. <laughs> I think that's a little bit unfair. We, we have known each other for nine years, so yeah. he knows how to joke. But uh, yeah, this is much more easier for him now also to take on board as, as, as the, the new leader of the organization. And, and then, because he has now a strategy that it's not only on his shoulders to implement, but actually there is a wide understanding within the organization uh, what it is and then also how it gets implemented. Uh, yeah. This kind of must win battle framework and, and yeah. the management team is committed to, to, to push this activity forward. But I must say, I think that you did a quite remarkable job there to introduce him because I mean, you could also easily say that if, the, if there is a new leader coming, he would easily, you know, want to put in his own stuff. And now he, in a way, was, was uh, uh, you know, transferred to a ready table. So, but, but you did a very good introduction to him so that I also felt that he liked what he saw and he wanted to continue it. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And as an interim, I was there, there working between the, the, the old guy left and before we were able to get the, the new one on yeah. board uh, in, in, in the same company as I'm working right now. So, so yeah, yeah the, I think the key was that as an interim manager, I didn't want to change too much. But at the same time, you couldn't and shouldn't stop the development of the organization. So, so I was therefore using this as a tool to get alignment into the company. And, and, and of course, strategy, it's not like I said, it's not something that the leadership 
team only should be doing in its chamber instead it should be something where you get the best ideas from the organization so it's easy for anyone to come and pick up because these were not something that was invented in the small meeting room but instead of involving the, the yeah. big meeting was well over 100 persons so that is the yeah. big big benefit so so uh, but uh, if if i still ask you a question petri what was the number one benefit of the whole process so what would you how do you answer that alignment Alignment. Yeah. alignment of, 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 of the thinking within the, the, the whole organism. Yes. But the hey, hey, everything is not only dancing on roses and so on. So we had challenges and you have been experiencing challenges. So what is the what have you learned from them and what can you share? Yeah, the, the challenges are of course in the beginning. If I say that the biggest benefit is, is the alignment. The challenge is also to get the alignment because there is always a difference in opinion. So, so, so therefore, that is one of the challenges. And the other one is, is of, of course, the time management. You know, some discussions you could go on forever. You know, hours and hours about yeah. in certain things. So, so keeping the focus and um, keeping the timeline. That is another challenge in a process like this. Yeah. So, we actually get productive. Of course, you know, if you don't need to yeah. be productive, but I guess we all want to be productive. Then. But if you don't need, then you can talk about small things uh, forever. But, but here we wanted to, to, to first crack the big picture and then go to the details. And then we parked some ideas until we were ready to discuss the detailed stuff later on in the process. So yeah. I think the time and focus. Yeah, I think, uh, thank you for taking up this, uh, this topic because the prioritization of the ideas, if you talk about very small things for, uh, for long, then you don't have time to talk about the big things. How, how did we tackle that? Could you tell your view? Prioritization, prioritization. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's always, always difficult to put the prioritization, but that's where the leadership comes in. And, 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 and of course, you know, the one whoever is, is, is leading this process needs to have the, both the, the right and an authority, but, but also the courage to, to, to say that, okay, let's park this, let's come back to this. And, 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 and then even push this, this consultant here, Marcus Westerland, who is a, yeah. a, 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 a very nice guy and manages the process extremely well, but, but sometimes we need to also sort of push you to, to the right direction. Yeah, it's, it's of course, yeah, I'm, I'm only the pilot, you are the captain, so, so our pilot gives advice, but the cap, captain decides the, 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 the way forward. So, uh, Petri, what would you, your top advice be to, to the viewers of this, of creating a customer strategy and also the, 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 the business strategy, which was the one page? So we did both. Yes, yes, we so did what both. Is, what is your advice? Now, if you would do it involve, once again. Yeah, involve as many people as, as you dare into the process to get the alignment organization-wide. And, and, and you know, of course, uh, it is a scary thought to let them to, 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 to the whole organization to see even something which is not yet ready. But actually, that's how you get the alignment. Then uh, when the organization and, and individuals can contribute towards the, 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 the outcome, the, the, the end result already in the early stage, the alignment will be much better. And, and, and also the empowerment, feeling of empowerment, which is much more greater. So, so as many persons as you dare get involved in there, because the modern tools allows you to, to get thousand persons and that you can you are able to put them into into small groups of one through two to three persons easily also, so yeah. it, the, the more you can have it it's the better no. thank you for that and i remember just it was so funny because i counted the comments that we we got from during these video meetings and we used trello boards you know to document them and and uh, I remember that in the beginning, the, the kickoff and, and the management interviews together, 407 comments. And, and that was all the ideas, you know, and then we funneled them down to the one page, you know, criticizing which are the important things. Hey, hey Petri, thank you so much for this. I, I think this was, gave a good, good new angle to, to this virtual summit. And, and, and now you open up the customer strategy and that. And, and I also admire your your way to, to lead. You are so 
you, you don't get nervous. And the guys, you know, <laughs> didn't get it. <laughs> and you had the patience to wait also and then to push when the time is there. Thank you very much, Petri Karjalainen, and best, all the best, best wishes to you. See you later. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.